thought I'd start this video today by giving you a view of the Arkansas River Valley as seen from uh, Mount Pettigene in Conway County, Arkansas. And what you're looking at, oh, it's several hundred feet down below from where we're at. That's the Arkansas River flowing right there. This is a famous uh, place in Conway County, a big vacation spot during the summertime, and, and just an overall nice place to visit. Okay, time to get back to something a little more important and maybe even a little more interesting to some folks. I hope that the uh, audio this time will not be as uh, swirly and weird sounding as it has been in all my other videos. Uh, I think a lot of that has to do with the compression uh, of the YouTube video. Once it gets uploaded, YouTube really compresses that stuff and it the particular audio on this camera may just not compress very well so let's move on and see how it goes this time hopefully the voice will be a lot better I'll talk a little lower maybe that'll help I'm trying everything I can to make it sound better for everybody else uh, what we have here is uh, another uh, shortwave receiver it's, it's made by uh, it's a realistic uh, DX160 uh, made in Japan for uh, Radio Shack uh, they were manufactured between uh, uh, 1975 and 1980, and Radio Shack being a division of the Tandy Corporation. Now, a lot of people have called this little radio here a boat anchor wannabe. It's a solid state. It's not tubes. Uh, it's a six transistor, a shortwave, and AM receiver, AM broadcast receiver. Uh, I got it from my... Uh, my 12-year-old grandson, uh, I wanted him to have a, a shortwave receiver where he could uh, listen to, you know, various broadcasts around the world. But, you know, he's a pretty inquisitive little fella. And I decided I better not get him a tube set. He might start poking around down there with his little fingers and wind up getting juiced pretty badly. And uh, so I went with a solid state with a, a top that's totally sealed. Whereas many of the old boat anchors, you could just lift the lid on them and look down inside and play, you know, pull tubes and things like that. I didn't want that. So this is what I came up with. It's a nice little receiver. Uh, when I first got it, the uh, antenna trim knob you see right here was broken off the shaft. With, uh, the shaft had been broken. Something had hit it. And I did a repair on it and got it all working again. Gave it a good cleaning inside and out. Uh, it came without a speaker, but I did manage to find a matching speaker. One of the members on the Antique Radio Forum uh, uh, sold me this speaker as well as a member of the Antique Radio Forum uh, also sold me this uh, DX160. So let's take a quick look at it and then we'll turn it on and listen to it. Uh, as I said it was made in Japan and uh, it is a six transistor radio. It has a product, what's called a product detector in the front of the radio. It has a beat frequency oscillator uh, which is right here or called the pitch control and it also has your AF gain, audio frequency gain which is nothing but a fancy way of saying on off and uh, volume and here's the antenna trim knob or the antenna compensator and just like the one uh, I had on the the Hammerlin uh, video that you saw and then of course your bands or this is uh, uh, band uh, one two three four five and it's, it's a five band receiver and uh, we have an RF gain which cranks up the RF uh, and uh, uh, it has a band spread knob just like on the uh, just like on the uh, the Hammerlin, and it also has a uh, an S meter, which is kind of neat, because when you're adjusting your antenna trim, you can uh, bring in your get your highest signal. Again, it's not a something you uh, you know live or die by, but it's a great indication on how well you're doing for signal received. And you have your automatic volume control, which is uh, fast and slow on this, and of course your uh, your uh, receive and standby switch for transmit and and uh, receive. You also have an automatic noise uh, limiter, which is right here, and you have a single sideband uh, and continuous wave, which is Morse code. SSB is single sideband, CW is Morse code, and that's when you use your beat frequency oscillator. You'll get that quacky sound, uh, uh, Donald Duck sound, I call it. Other people call it uh, the teacher on Simpsons or something. I don't know. I've never watched Simpsons, so I don't really care. And, and uh, then you adjust your pitch or your beat frequency oscillator uh, in the single sideband and continuous wave mode. And you can bring in your uh, single sideband transmissions and your Morse code. 
Now let me see. I, I, I mean, I just dropped my paper on the deck here. Okay, I picked up. I took a few more notes off the internet on this thing. Uh, it's also uh, it weighs about 11 pounds, and as I said, it was manufactured between uh, 1975 and 1980, and it cost $159.95 when it was new. And the Japanese did a really good job on this baby. Uh, they made it really user friendly, which is something I like. Uh, the speaker. Let's take a look at the speaker, for instance. Uh, the speaker is a separate unit. But if you look in the back here, it's, it's no big deal to hook it up. All you have to do is take this little plug right here and stick it in that little hole. Let me see here. Let me get this baby out of here. Stick it. Uh, take this little plug right here. I had the wrong plug. This little plug right here, which goes to your speaker, and you just plug it in this little hole in the back. And that's it. Your speaker's hooked up. That's about as cool as you can get. It just doesn't get any better. And uh, this thing also works off of DC volts. You hook up a 12-volt DC volt power supply in the back, and it will it will play. So let's take a look at it. Uh, we'll back up. I'll put this thing on a tripod, and then we'll do a little listening to see how well it sounds. It has nice sound for a, uh, for a little uh, transistor unit, but it was designed well, and it was designed for the first time shortwave uh, buyer at a good price and uh, you see these on eBay all the time I would not pay any more than seventy dollars for one and that ain't, that's with the speaker uh, you, it's your money though you, you spend what you want I've seen some uh, price of hundred and fifty dollars being asked for one I don't I don't think it's worth hundred and fifty dollars I certainly didn't pay hundred and fifty dollars for mine and that includes shipping so uh, spend your money wisely on eBay and you can find some very good deals. This is a nice little radio. Anyway, I just wanted you to hear a few of the sounds uh, of it. And uh, then we'll switch over to AM here in a second, see what we can pick up on AM. And uh, But this is a five-band radio, A, B, C, D, and E band. Band spread. The band spread works very nicely. Now you will experience a little drift with this radio. Uh, some people complained said it was drifty as can be. They were constantly having to turn the uh, the uh, uh, band spread to keep it in tune. Well, sometimes yes. A lot of that has to do with the temperature. And uh, you keep your house at a certain temperature all the time. And it helps let it warm up for quite a while, just like a tube set. And uh, you know it develops a, an inside temperature, and it helps with the with the stability of the frequency. But that's what the band spread is for. That's why they have it there. Now let's go to. Uh, let's go to the AM or the AM band, which would be uh, right here, which is B band. Let's see what we can get with that baby. Well, there you go, folks. Realistic DX160, man, manufactured uh, 1975 to 1980, a great kids radio. Uh, I picked my grandson up a, uh, a headset with a stereo to with a uh, stereo to mono adapter and. Uh, so now he'll be able to listen to it in his room and not disturb his mom and dad at night. I, I hope he'll listen to it. And uh, it works very well. Not a very expensive headset, but it's fine for him and his needs. And it works fine. He can listen to it all day long. And mom and dad won't say, turn that thing down. Thank you all for dropping in one more time in the, in the corner on the deck.